you know, every time I meet people who are really great at what they do, uh, I always ask them, did you always want wanted to be this person? Did you always, you know, we all know that Sachin Tendulkar always wanted to be a cricketer. Shah Rukh Khan always wanted to be an actor, and that's why they're great. But is that the only reason why they're great? Because I never knew what I wanted to be for the longest time. For the longest time, I, as, as, as a youngster, I would choose my profession according to the movie that I liked. So um, I remember in 93, um, Akshay Kumar came out with a movie called Senik, and uh, he was an army guy, and he could do martial arts, and he could fire people. And I was like, wow, that's so cool. So I went to my mom and said, how do you become an army man? And well, they told me that you go to IMA, and then you do this, then you do that. And I was like, wow, that's great. Uh, I think a few months later, uh, Damini came out, and I loved Sunny Deol, so I went back to my parents and I said, forget about the army guy. How do you become a lawyer? Then again, they told me, well, you go to a law school, you do this, you do that. I think they were just happy that I was never a big fan of Dar. Otherwise, I would have gone up to them and said, how do you become a psychopath? Uh, well, I kept doing this. I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Uh, my dad had a family business, and well, if nothing happened, I would have to join him. Till the time in 2001, Dil Chata came out. Uh, I hope enough people here have seen Dil Chata, because that's really uh, the life changer for me. Um, when Dil Chata came out in 2001, I saw it, and for the first time, we'd seen all these actors before. We'd seen Amir Khan, we'd seen Saif Ali Khan, we'd seen Akshay, Akshay Khanna, but we'd never seen them the, day we, the, the way they were in the movie. They never behaved like that on the screen. It, the movie looked different, it felt different. And by that time, I was old enough to realize that there's somebody behind making it all happen. There is somebody whose vision it is to make a movie. And that's what made me realize the power of a filmmaker, of a director. And uh, two things happened. I went to my mom. And first, I told them, how do you become a filmmaker? And second, I told them I wanted to marry Titi Zinta. And I was more serious about the latter. Uh, well, they seemed confused. Uh, they didn't really know how, how is it that one becomes a filmmaker. And when I had to prepare this, uh, uh, the, the, the talk that I was going to have today, somehow it all went back to that point that our education system has laid certain paths if you want to be a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer but how do you become a filmmaker? just because you go to a film school does that make you a filmmaker? because Woody Allen never went to film school, Billy Wilder never went to film school, Tarantino never went to film school and there are a lot of people who went to film school and never made good movies uh, I'm glad my father's not here today. He'll be very upset that I went to film school. Um, anyway, so at that point, nothing made sense to me, and I just decided to go for film school because I didn't know anything better. And I came back from film school, and fortunately things worked out. But I still question, and I still wonder, what is it that makes a filmmaker? Who is a filmmaker? And I realize, as I said, our education system has laid paths for other professions, which are, there's a logical way to get there. You know, there's a hierarchy, there's a certain way you can get there. But I think for creative fields, or uh, for filmmaking, there's no certain path. And I, I cannot talk on, uh, on, on behalf of uh, other creative fields, but I can talk about movie making. And I'm not going to talk about how to be a great filmmaker or how to be a good filmmaker because I think that's a different conversation altogether and uh, I shouldn't be here for that. Probably Anurag Kashyap or Vishal Bhardwaj or Zoya Akhtar should be here to talk about how to make great movies. But I think I want to talk about how to get your foot in the door. How do you even get started? You know, how to make great movies is a separate thing altogether. You know, I mean, I don't think anybody can teach you how to be great at anything. Otherwise, Sachin Tendulkar's kid would be the best batsman we have after him. So I don't think anybody can teach us how to be great. That has to be our own motivation, our own inspiration. But we can find ways to get our foot in the door. 
and that's what I'm going to talk about. Apart from uh, what is needed to be a filmmaker, which is imagination, uh, storytelling abilities, what other things go into making making your dream come true? In you know, because you, I see a lot of people. I got an email uh, the other day uh, from an assistant, uh, uh, a guy who wanted to be an assistant director, and uh, he said, "I'm a qualified professional filmmaker from New York Film Academy," and it made no sense. It makes no sense. Like there's nothing like that. Just because you go to a New York Film Academy doesn't make you a qualified professional filmmaker. And on the other hand, I got another. I, I get, get I get a lot of emails which. Uh, generally uh, uh, go like this, that I want to be in the movies, but I don't know what to do. I don't know how, how to handle it. You can't just land in Bombay City. I mean, you can, I did. You land in Bombay City and then you're clueless for a, for, a, for a month or two. You try meeting a few people. They give you a few leads. You go there. You meet other people. And you try to figure out how it works. And or you can, or the other thing I did, uh, by the way, before I went to film school, is I, I picked up this book which said, how to be a filmmaker in 15 days. Yeah, right. How, how? Like, I mean, and since then I've had a rule. Any book that has a cover page with a deadline, which says 15 days, 20 days, I never pick that up. It's, it never works. Nobody can teach you anything in 15 days or 20 days or 30 days or a year. Um, anyway, going back to uh, what we're talking about here is how to be a filmmaker. Well, as I said, apart from the, um, uh, the regular things of uh, storytelling abilities and, and, and uh, you know, just, just wanting to be out there making movies, I think there are, there are four or five things that really go into it. And it's hard work, it's uh, talent, it's goodwill, it's luck, and passion. Well. Most of you will be like, wow, we've all heard this before, and wow, this guy flew down to speak about this. We all know what these five things mean, but I, I mostly every time I work with newcomers, uh, you feel like they know, they know the meaning of these things, but somewhere while working, they tend to lose the essence of it. Like, what does it really stand for? So, Without taking too much time, what I wanted to do was, I wanted to talk about these five things in the movie business and how, how, how they, they could mean different things in different fields. Starting with passion. The first thing you need, obviously, to be a movie maker is the passion. Is the passion to be able to go out there and be like, I want to make a movie. You know, I really want to go out there, I have a story to tell, and I know I need to put it on the big screen. Well, it's, here's the difference. I feel like I meet a lot of people who are really passionate about watching movies, and they love movies, and they read all kind of articles about movies, and they know, they watch every show on movie. They, they can tell you about the technicalities of film. But love for watching movie, love, if you love watching movies, is very different than love for making movies. You know, there's a certain discipline that goes into making movies. And I see these people who, who come from, uh, you know, all different cities, and they keep talking about different movies, but when they're on set, they're not enjoying it. They, they just don't, they don't feel like they can be there for more than like three hours or four hours, and they're always like, oh, why are we taking so long? Oh, why are we taking another take? But that's the problem. You need to love making movies and not just love the movies. It's very important to love movies if you want to be a movie maker, but there's a step forward. You need to love making movies. There are a lot of people who love actors and stars and stardom, and they, they're always looking at Shah Rukh Khan coming out of the vanity and you know the other actor coming out of the vanity, but that's not going to help you become a movie maker. You know, you need to get, get rid of that whole awe of these actors. That's, that's like the first step. You need to be in love with the director and the story that he's trying to tell. Um, secondly, uh, I, 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 I see a lot of people who say, you know what, I want to be a director. I'm a creative person. So I, I mean, I don't know if you guys know, uh, there are assistant directors and there are a whole bunch of people who make a movie. A director has a bunch, uh, a, a few assistants who work under him in different, uh, uh, you know, job profiles. Uh, 
and it's not a very creative creative job as an AD. You know, as an AD, you are blocking traffic, you are managing background action, you are making sure things are ready on time and the actors are ready on time. And it's a lot of logistics. It's a lot of just people management. And I meet a lot of people who um, who say things like, oh, you know what, I want to be a director and that's a creative job, so I'm not interested in being an AD. But let me tell you one thing. Anything creative, anything creative that you want to do needs an execution. And if if you do not understand, if, if you do not enjoy the execution of that, then there's no nothing that's going to help you. You, know, you can't just go on set and order things. Oh, I'm a creative person, so I want this to do it. It's not going to happen like that. You have to enjoy the execution is what I'm saying. You can't just enjoy the idea of sitting in a room and coming up with ideas and thoughts. You need to know how to take that idea and take it all the way to its, ex to its final stages. And you need to go through that. It's a, hard, it's a hard job. I mean, you need to deal with a lot of movie, uh, a lot of people. And that's one, one thing which is mainly different between movies and most of the art forms. You know, a painter can paint alone. A music composer can technically compose alone with a bunch of people. But as a movie maker, you are dealing with 100 people like from all different backgrounds doing different things. And you need to be able to talk to them and understand how much hard work it goes into it from their side. So uh, that's my other, 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 other thing that I feel when people come to make movies and they're like, oh, I just, I just want to be a creative guy. I don't want to do this job. It, I don't understand. If you do not enjoy the process, there's ne never, you're never going to get there. Secondly, hard work. Well, hard work is really easy to understand. I think everyone just says, oh, yeah, you know, it's, it's hard work. But uh, a, a regular day in, 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 on, on a movie set is 12 hour long. You know, we start at 6 in the morning and we, we work all the way till 6 at night and sometimes a little longer. That means you leave your house at 5 o'clock. So everybody on the movie set thinks that they're working hard because everyone's working 12 hours, 13 hours, 14 hours. Then how do you differentiate between people who are working hard and those who are working harder and those who are actually not doing anything. Just because we work 12 hours a day doesn't make us hard working. Let's, let's just be very honest about that. Number of hours we work is not always directly uh, you know, proportionate to how, how hard we are working. And what makes, makes the difference is the productivity, is how much you achieve in those 12 hours. Uh, there are people who come in the morning, they'll take one little job and they'll take five hours to finish that, then they'll take another five hours and they'll go home and sleep and come back the next day. But that's, and you are technically working 12 hours a day, but that's not hard work. Uh, you need to not only work those 12 hours, when you go back, you still have to be thinking about it. You are pretty much living the film with you. Everybody, everybody who's involved in making a film, like my cameraman, like my production designer, when we meet the next morning, they've already come up with new ideas. They, they have the interpretation of the, of the scene that day because they've thought about it that night when they went back home and they thought about it when they were driving to the set. So it's not only about how many hours we work a day because I remember um, uh, I used to have uh, a colleague who's, who was obviously shooting with me and we'll, we'll work like 13, 14, 15 hours and he'll call back home and his mother will always be like, oh, bap re, kitna kaam kar rahe, kitna kaam kar rahe. But he did nothing. All he did was came in the morning, gave the actors the costume, then sat around the set, then went back home. So hard work is different than the number of hours we put in. Third, goodwill. Goodwill is, is how much, uh, is word of mouth. You know, in our industry, resumes don't really work after a point. It's, it's word of mouth. It's, it's how well you behave on set, how hard you work, how much, uh, you know, un uh, what kind of understanding you have with people who work around you, you know. Are you polite to them? And I think most people come with an attitude that if they're doing their job, then that's all that matters. No, it doesn't. It's, 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 about, uh, it's about people management. It's about people who work with you. They need to feel that they like working with you. And that's what's goodwill all about, you know. You, the people need to call other people and say that they want, uh, they, they, they want to work with you. And luck. Well, talent, I think all of us know about talent, so I'm not going to get into that because of the buzz is going on. Uh, 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 luck. 
Well, I have just have a quote here from my favorite filmmaker, and I'd like to end the speech with that, which is by Sidney Lumet. And he says, I'm a talented man, but then there's luck. I think there's a reason luck doesn't always happen to others. They don't know how to do the groundwork for it. I do. And I think that's, that's really the end of it. You, luck only comes to those who work towards it, otherwise it doesn't. Anyway, thank you everyone. Hope you have a good evening.